Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Hunt and today I will be reviewing the graphic novel My Favorite Thing is Monsters by Emile Ferris. This is a complex, emotional, and thrilling read full of twists and turns around every corner. Before diving into the contents of the book, I'd like to point out that if you look on the back cover, you will see that Ferris is commended by one of our classroom names, Alison Bechtel, who praises Ferris's work immensely, saying this book is a monster of a book in the best possible way. It isn't surprising that Bechtel praises this book, since it also deals with sexuality, which is one of Bechtel's favorite topics. To kick off this graphic novel review, I will start with a brief summary, though I don't want to give away too much of the plot in case you want to read it for yourself. The story is set in Chicago in the late 60s and follows Karen Rays, a 10-year-old girl who is obsessed with monsters. After her upstairs neighbor Anka, a Holocaust survivor with a very dark past, is murdered, Karen takes it upon herself to investigate the murder, taking us back to Nazi Germany and Anka's life growing up in a brothel. However, digging up Anka's past also begins to unravel the stories and secrets of the people around her. Perhaps not everyone is who they seem to be. Ferris's My Favorite Thing is Monsters ties in the monsters of our fantasies with the very real monsters we face in our daily lives. I'd like to give a quick warning that this graphic novel tackles some heavy topics like sexual and physical abuse, rape, pedophilia, racism, murder, and bullying. Events like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s death is a subject that is touched upon alongside Nazi Germany and experiencing child sex slavery. So just before we go into that, I want to give a quick warning that some of those things will be displayed. I'd like to first talk about Karen because she is our main character and she's pretty important. Um, she likes to display herself through a lens of being a monster. She depicts herself as a little werewolf girl, which I think is pretty interesting and something that makes this book really unique. Um, she's also a young girl who is experiencing confusion with her sexuality. She feels drawn towards girls, um, particularly one of her friends. And I think that is also something that's interesting because you don't see that a lot with younger children. So I think it's interesting that that's being explored in this book. Karen is an outcast. She deals with a lot of bullying. She is more poor. She's of a mixed race. And so I think her view of viewing herself as a monster is a way for her to protect herself. It's a way for her to feel powerful. And it's how she makes herself not feel so scared. Because as a monster, she can protect herself and she feels like she can protect her family. And the main reason I think that she wants to be a monster is because her mother gets sick and she feels that if she can be a monster and bite her mother, she can make her family immortal and they can live forever together. Moving on to the plot, I think that Ferris does an amazing job of braiding the plot together because it is quite complicated. You have Anka's story with Germany and the brothel going on, and then you have Karen with her investigation, and then you have Karen's older brother, Dees, who has some pretty dark stuff going on in his own life. And all of this sort of gets braided together, and Anka kind of starts as the as the story that sets things in motion, and then Karen and Dees kind of take the rest of the story to the end. And Ferris does a really good job of bouncing back and forth pulling the reader out of one section and putting them in another right when you're just feeling like you're right in the mood for it. So I feel like altogether, Ferris does a really good job. So if you love a book that's able to move around to different parts of a story, this is definitely the book for you. And the art style for this book is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's drawn in like this journalistic, sketchy sort of way. It's got like notebook paper as a 10-year-old might draw on, which fits Karen. It's grim, it's gritty, it's dark, and it's very detailed, which I love. Um, the chapters are split up like comic book covers um, or like a movie poster. And a little fun fact is that Ferris was going through some health issues because she had contracted West Nile virus. And that's actually why all of her panels and everything were so broken up and why her artwork is so free is because she had to teach herself how to redraw, which explains why her art looks the way that it does. 
Some issues that I had with this graphic novel is that it does end on a cliffhanger. There's going to be a sequel published next year, but this was published in 2017, so if I had read it a couple years ago, I probably would have been a little upset because I got really into this graphic novel and now I have to wait. Ferris really built it on heavy at the end. A lot of things unraveled and we don't get the answers that we want, and so we have to wait, and I'm really frustrated with that. But in conclusion, I would rate this novel with five stars because to me it's suspenseful, compelling, evokes emotions that are good and ugly, and it has a splash of fiction and nonfiction because you have all the monsters and then you have the compelling history with the things going on with racism and all the stuff going on with sexuality and the sexual abuse. It's full of beautiful art, controversial topics, and it challenges you to think about the true definition of a monster because you have the fictional monster, but then you have real life monsters monsters as well. So that's it for my review and I want to thank you guys for listening.